Just as a fair warning, this is a review of an adult property suitable for ages 18 and up only. If you're not of that age or this doesn't interest you, you might want to back out now. If not, enjoy the show. Hey, you've reached the line of the Hasbin Hotel. For check-in, press 1. For reformation services, press 2. If you're the guy who keeps pestering us to buy stuff, congratulations, my fine fellow. You're officially a fate worse than death. <laughs> you doing? My name's Doom Guy. Uh, I've heard Hell's got an overpopulation problem, and I just wanted to offer my services. Uh, I've cleared out the denizens of hell plenty of times before, you know, got some work experience there. And yeah, not really doing anything at the moment. So if the whole redemption thing's not working out for you, I could clean up the place pretty quick. Oh, my friends tell me I make a pretty good margarita too, so I could run the bar if you want. So yeah, mass genocide or cold drinks, if either of those sound good, then I guess I'm your guy. I uh, mailed you a copy of my resume, so maybe I'll hear back from you soon, okay? Okay, I'll see you later. Eh, I'll put it on file. So, it's come to this. Years and years of blood, sweat, tears, and... More blood has led us to the magnum opus of famous online animator Vivzy Pop, Has Been Hotel. It's as vulgar, crass, violent, and offensive as you can get. And for a show that takes place entirely in hell, you know, where all the bad people go, it makes complete sense in my eyes. Now, if you're expecting endless gushing like 90% of the internet, well, there'll be a little bit of that. But more than anything, I want to focus on one hard-hitting question. Like anyone who creates an animated pilot, Vivzy is shopping this around in hopes that it'll get picked up for a full series. And the major thing to ask here is why? Why should this get picked up for a full series? Why should potential buyers give this show a chance? Why should Has Been Hotel become the next big thing? I mean, it has dazzling visuals, expressive animation, stellar voice work, catchy songs, decent comedy, and a fun premise. Those things alone are enough to make for a great potential show, right? But from where I'm standing, the potential of Has Been Hotel actually goes way deeper than a lot of people might expect. Speaking as a lifelong lover of cartoons and someone who's wanted to make their own cartoon for years now, the green lighting of this show on mainstream TV will stand as a beacon of hope for multiple different reasons. Different reasons that, of course, I'm going to discuss today. Full disclosure, I have spoken to Vivzy on many occasions, and she's been nothing but a sweetheart. But I'll be putting all personal biases aside for this analysis just so I can judge the art for what it is. Though expect a little something for her at the end. Open up those windows and grab a cool glass of something, cause it's gonna be a hot one tonight! Let's discuss why television needs has been hotel! So anyone who's followed Vivzy's animations for a while can tell that her signature style is just oozing from every crack of this production. The backgrounds and environments are really well drawn, and are loaded with blink and you'll miss it details. The actions and effects have tons of punch to them, which is definitely needed when you have gang violence in hell. And Vivzy's greatest strength since the beginning, her character designs, are as good as they've ever been. It's good. This is one of those animated pilots where you can just mute the entire thing and still be able to sum up a character's personality just based on how they look. Alright, a smiley blonde girl with rosy cheeks and a literal puppy dog face? She's the bubbly optimist with a song in her heart. A spider guy with a slender body and crooked head with one black and one white eye? He's a shifty quagmire with a little bit of good hiding under his cruel exterior. A gray girl with scraggly hair and a red X on one of her eyes that never leaves even when her hair is in front of it? She's the anger-prone straight man who's not afraid to X out anybody that makes her mad. Yeah, a few characters do dip their toes into over-designed territory, which does make them seem like they weren't really designed with animation in mind. There are some odd visual farts here and there, with proportions, scaling, and movement feeling a little bit off, and the characters and backgrounds all following the exact same color scheme of black, white, and red can be bland to look at at times. But when you factor in the super detailed facial expressions, buttery smooth movements, and ability to change from stretchy and cartoony to slow and graceful when the mood calls for it, you've got plenty of good to balance out the bad. However, it's one thing to love and appreciate an animated piece, but it's another thing to have it resonate with you. And just the look of this pilot delivers a massive gut punch to my nostalgia that makes me vomit rainbows everywhere. As someone who's been watching cartoons since I knew what a television was, my love for them has not faded one bit. Sure, my interest in shows has changed over time, but my overall love for animated media? 
Nope! If anything, that's stronger than ever now. But by far the weirdest point in my cartoon-loving life was transitioning from kids' animation to adult animation. Kids' animation as a whole is vibrant, stretchy, energetic, bombastic, colorful, and all over the place. While most adult animation is slow, sluggish, realistic, almost constipated in a way. There are obviously exceptions to this, like Gendy Tartakovsky's Primal and Samurai Jack Season 5, plus I understand that sometimes mediocre animation is done for a good reason. I heard that South Park animates the way they do so they can release episodes faster and keep up with trends, and that makes perfect sense. But to have the majority of adult TV animation be very stiff and unimpressive, even in high-concept shows like Futurama and Rick and Morty, it makes for a visually unimpressive time compared to what I used to have during my childhood. But then you've got Has Been Hotel, which feels like it was custom-made for adults who grew up watching cartoons. The extremely expressive over-the-top faces call back to shows like Invader Zim and Ren and Stimpy, the bouncy movements and perfectly timed slapstick feel very Craig McCracken inspired, the grim dark atmosphere and various monster designs will surely make Billy and Mandy fans feel at home, and if it keeps up this level of production in a full series, it'll easily stand out in the adult animation crowd and likely speak to longtime cartoon lovers in the same way it spoke to me. It could fill a special niche in the TV world that's remained untouched for years, and would likely gain a really big following because of that. I'm not trying to say that current adult cartoons are bad, heck I watch Bob's Burgers every night while I edit videos, but greenlighting a full series with this style and visual tone would rekindle joys of younger cartoon generations, but with the added perk of an 18 plus rating. Like serving us a more adult meal that still has a nostalgic taste to it, taking off the training wheels without repainting the bike. You get the idea. However, when you have a show styled and written in this way, there is the chance that people would pass it off as immature childish garbage and try to find something else. I think the over-the-top visuals and humor just add to the fun, but hey, it can't be everyone's cup of tea. So for those who expect something more adult from this adult cartoon, I ask you to consider this. The basic premise of the show is that a demon princess named Charlie wants to open up a hotel to reform sinners and hopefully stop an overpopulation problem in hell. Heaven holds an annual purge and slaughters everyone to lower the population themselves, and Charlie being a ruler that cares about her people, hopes that her plan will mean less bloodshed and less beings going to... I don't know, double hell? Hell 2.0? They don't really clarify where demons go when they die a second time. Hell's supposed to be eternal damnation, right? Like they're stuck there for all eternity? Eh, whatever, I guess they'll explain it later. Anyway, this premise is enough to make for an interesting story, and the characters carry every scene they're in. But behind all these flashy colors and musical numbers is actually a very smart spin on the concepts of redemption and morality. Morality essentially exists in three distinct colors. White morality, meaning absolute good, black morality, meaning pure evil, and gray morality, which comes in many different shades, but is always some combination of black and white. Morally gray characters and worlds are often the ones that feel the most organic. Because there's no designated good guy or designated bad guy, everyone feels like a person instead of a caricature, allowing viewers to relate more to what's going on on screen. And it's clear from many subtle hints that most of Hasbin's cast fit in the Morley Gray spectrum, even if they refuse to admit it. That's right, Angel Dust. Don't think I didn't see you wanting to comfort Charlie that one time. You can't hide from me. But what makes this show the most interesting is that this is heaven and hell we're talking about. I've been enrolled in a Catholic school all the way until college, which means I pretty much studied theology... religiously. And in the majority of stories I've read, heaven and hell are always portrayed as the ultimate good place and ultimate bad place. Heaven has nothing but sweet and huggable cinnamon rolls that snuggle puppies and bake cookies, while hell has nothing but irredeemable jerk faces who kick old ladies and rip tags off mattresses. These two places are probably the most well-known examples of black and white morality ever. Heck, the angel halo and devil horns are the definitive ways to visualize good and bad people. But I've always been a big fan of heaven and hell stories that blanket things in a shade of gray, showing that even the ultimate good place and ultimate evil place can be more than just one note. The has-been cast have bits of grayness to their character sprinkled pretty much everywhere. Literally, in Vaggie's case. We've got Angel Dust who fights in gang wars, takes drugs, and does not save for work stuff for a living, but we're shown that he does feel guilty when he makes Charlie upset, and probably would have comforted her if he wasn't so obsessed with keeping his reputation up. It's a nice hint, though, that he's likely to come around later. Charlie is about as bubbly and sweet a protagonist as you can get, but she's no stranger to dropping a curse word and even taking on a crazy devil form in a few scenes. It's not only a cool visual effect, but it likely shows that she's making an effort to suppress her own inner demons, which is already living proof that Hell's residents can change if they really want to. 
both of these guys are native to hell, but aren't painted as 100% bad beings, showing that even a realm with the most infamous reputation ever doesn't exclusively house hopeless evil people. The whole yearly demon purge thing also casts a gray shadow on heaven as well. Since the first and only time we see angels in this episode, they're presented with crooked smiles and faces. Now this could just be the residents of hell demonizing the angels for killing their kind, but I like to think that maybe the angels actually get a sick kick out of destroying these sinners. That those are smiles of genuine enjoyment from giving the wicked ones the axe. This would show that angels aren't exactly as pure as everybody assumes, and maybe even when Charlie does redeem a demon, the angels won't allow entrance to heaven simply because they don't believe that demons are capable of change. This is all just speculation, obviously, but it would really make everything come full circle if we added some black to the white after adding all this white to the black. <laughs> Take a shot every time I say black, white, or gray, by the way. Ah, <sighs> that's some good white. As far as their take on redemption is concerned, Charlie approaches it from a very realistic angle. When she invites Alistair on board to help at this hotel, she's not blind to the fact that his redemption possibility is extremely slim. If anything, he's more trouble than he's worth. But she built this hotel on the moral high ground, so she feels that it would go against everything she stood for if she didn't at least give him a chance. That's really all you need to do. Don't force it out of them, don't constantly pester them to change, just give them a chance and see where it goes from there. Simple, realistic, and in character. I like it. The show is laid out in such a way that those looking for deep adult themes can easily find them. While those who just want to have fun can enjoy the escapades of our hotel staff and the crazy turf wars between Cherry Bomb Chick, Black Hat as a Cobra Commander, and of course hordes and hordes of... Deviled Eggs! Wowza! Not even the laugh track gave you a pity laugh on that one! Don't quit your day job, kid. Not like you got much of a choice with these numbers. <laughs> Shut up, you cherry coke. My last reason is probably the most obvious, but definitely needs to be said. If Has Been Hotel does make it to the big time, it would sow multiple seeds of hope across the internet, and prove that you can start from the bottom on YouTube as a simple animator and rise to the big leagues if you have the drive, passion, and resources. I'm not saying that Vivzi would be the only YouTuber to find this kind of success. I mean, I have to congratulate Olin Rogers on his success with Final Space, but I do feel like Vivzi's journey to the top is probably the easiest for people to follow and grasp. She graduated from the School of Visual Arts in New York City and posted her thesis film as one of her first videos. She continued to do speed paints of famous properties along with other animated music videos, GIFs, and even animation collabs, further showing her artistic talents and organization skills to the online community. She eventually gets the idea to start her own animated series, and hypes people up for years with drawings, animatics, headcanon voice reels, trailer after trailer after trailer, until finally it releases in October of 2019. A perfectly documented uphill climb from obscurity to notoriety. And with a ton of people in Vivzi's fanbase also being artists and animators, it wouldn't surprise me if a story like this would motivate them to try their hands at animated pilots of their own. There are thousands of creative people in the Has Been Hotel fanbase, and seeing Vivzi's series on TV might be the big shining example to show that this is possible. This is doable. Anyone who comes from humble beginnings can make something great and be on that screen too. Again, I'm not saying that she's the only example of this story, but she's the one that a lot of people are familiar with and devoted to, so I can see many future showrunners drawing inspiration from what she's done. Heck, my girlfriend and I have been drawing concepts for our own animated series for a while now, and Vivzi's success definitely gave me a lot of hope. Now I just need nearly 2 million subscribers and I'm all set. Has Been Hotel is not a perfect pilot, and I never expected it to be. Every pilot has problems that are ironed out when the full series is set up, and I expect the same thing will happen in this case. But the vibes I get from what's presented here are very positive, and in the right hands, this could turn out to be something excellent. At the moment, Has Been Hotel's future is unknown. Even Vivzi herself said so in a video she made after I wrote the script. So I guess all I can do now is just give everyone my regards. To Vivzi, her animators, all the voice actors and artists, the songwriters, everybody involved, congratulations on producing a product like this. Anyone can have an idea, but you guys took the extra step to create an actual, tangible entity that people can watch and enjoy. I wish nothing but success for all of you guys, and I'm looking forward to that workplace comedy spin-off show you're producing too. I can't wait to see the equivalent of Dilbert in Hell, that'll be fun. Well, that's pretty much all I've got to say, so thanks for tuning in everybody, and I hope to see you all- Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold your horses there, my good man! You had me guest appear in your silly video, and you don't even bother with a musical number? Clearly somebody's never been in show business! And clearly someone doesn't realize that we have time constraints! Hit it, boys! 
Real sharp teeth, muffled voice, dance with demon gals. Laugh track after every joke, constant sound of tap shoes, tentacles that rip you up. I can give girls guys haircuts, one-eyed maids with tiny skirts, drunk bartending furries. On second thought, maybe this show isn't such a good idea.